everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you joined me today for yet with another tutorial. This one is adorable. It is a fall asymmetrical cardigan. I am actually really, really liking it. It's very, very cute and it is so super easy to make. Join me. Let's create this together. Subscribe to my channel if you're not part of my crochet family. Come and check me out on my social media. And without further ado, if you are interested in creating this beautiful cardigan, then keep on watching. More sizes will be on my blog as usual in the next few days. This is a small medium. I hope you are all doing well. Kisses, hugs. Mwah. Grab your crochet and your yarn and let's crochet together. For this tutorial, which is a size small medium, I used four skins of the Red Heart It's a Wrap Rainbow in the color Couture. I love this yarn. It's beautiful. It reminds me of the Voltrum yarn, but it's way cheaper. So when I created my cardigan, I wanted the middle to be beige and then I wanted to gradually go color to color. Now with one skin of yarn, that would not be enough. You could do it with ombre color going to rapidly from gray to black and then from gray to black again. That would be very pretty. I just wanted it to be consistent, one color, then the next and the next. And for that, I had to take my skins and turn them in those tiny little balls of each different color. So I made a little ball and I cut every time there was another color added. And so like that, I ended with four little balls in each color of the yarn, uh, of the ombre colors of the couture yarn. And like that, I could do consistently the color in a slow gradient for all my cardigan. And that's the look I wanted. But you can do, of course, whatever you want. It's your cardigan. You can clearly see here how it's all beige in the middle and then it gets dark brown and then it gets to the turquoise and that's what I want. All right, I wanted to explain to you quickly how this cardigan is built and show you how easy it is. And here is Picasso at work. <laughs> so we're beginning making a big square and we're beginning from the center. We're beginning with a circle. We'll turn it into a granny. Of course, I'll take you slowly but surely as usual. And then we're going to leave little openings for the two arms inside the square. Again, I will show you how to do that. Once we have our square with the two slits open for the sleeves, we are going to make side panels. And those side panels that we are going to attach to the square are going to create that asymmetrical touch that we want. So the main part will be crocheted in the round and then the two side panels will be crocheted in rows. Once we have this rectangle with two slits in the middle, we're going to kind of make a border all around it, again crocheting in the round. And then eventually, once we uh, have this border done, what we're going to do is create the sleeves, because we already have the two opening for the sleeves. And the sleeves will be flared sleeved because you know me, I like that little boho touch. And voila, and once that is done, we are done with our cardigan. And the asymmetrical way of it, the asymmetrical touch will be just seen as you wear it. So this is the order we're going to work. One, the square. Two and three, the opening for the sleeves. Four and five, the panels. Six, the border and then seven and eight, the sleeves. One more thing, I will be working at the beginning with the light beige color, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I am using turquoise yarn until we meet the making of the arm opening. So don't pay attention to the color if you want your cardigan to be just like mine with the lighter beige color. Take your crochet hook and your yarn and make a magic circle. Once you are done making your magic circle, chain one. And inside your magic circle, you will make eight puff stitches. Let me remind you how to make a puff stitch. You yarn over, go through the magic circle, yarn over and back, and you pull a little. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, through the magic circle, yarn over and back, you have five loops on your hook, yarn over, through the circle, yarn over and back, pull a little, you have seven loops on your hook, 
you're going to yarn over and pull through all the seven loops that are on your hook. And then you're going to seal it with a chain. And just like that, you created a puff stitch. But what we're going to do is eight puff stitches in your magic circle. I will meet you once you have eight puff stitches. And that is your first round. We will be crocheting in the round. At the end of your round, you're going to slip stitch with the first, at the top of the first puff stitch you had made at the beginning of your first round. And that is what you're going to do at the end of each round is slip stitch with the first puff stitch you had made, unless I tell you otherwise. For round two, slip stitch in between the first two puff stitches, and you're going to make two puff stitches in every space in between the puff stitches from the previous round. So two puff stitches in the same space. And then two puff stitches in the next space in between the two next puffs. So at the end of your second round, you will have 16 puff stitches. I will meet you then. And this is what your work will look like at the end of your second round. I still have to make two more puff stitches and then I will slip stitch on top of the first puff stitch I had made to end this second round. So we are slowly going to turn this round into a square. This is what we need to create our cardigan. So in the next uh, space in between the two puff stitches from the previous round, from round two, we are at round three, you're going to make a puff stitch and you're going to make a second puff stitch in that same space. And now you're going to make a puff stitch in between the two puff stitches from the previous round three times. So one puff in each space in between two puff stitches three times. So you will have the two puff stitches in the same space, which will act as a corner. And then you're going to have three regular puff stitches in between the two puff stitches from the previous round. Once you have three puff stitches, you're going to create your second corner. So in the next space between the two puff stitches from the previous round, you're going to make two puff stitches in that same space. And then you're going to repeat what we have done before. You're going to make a puff stitch three times between the two puff stitches from the previous round.
there you go then you're going to create your third corner by making two puff stitches in the next spot then three and then your fourth corner and then three all right so that will be your third round i will meet you at the end of your third round this is what your work will look like i just need to slip stitch on top of the first puff stitch i made at the beginning of that third round you have 20 puffs at the end of your third round And for your fourth round, super easy, you are going to make a round of puff stitches in between each and every two puff stitch from the previous uh, round. So at the end of your fourth round, you will still have 20 puffs. And I will meet you at the end of your fourth round. And this is what your work will look like at the end of your fourth round. You end your round as usual, slip stitching at the top of the first puff. And now we're going to create the fifth round. Fifth round will be just um, emphasizing those corners again and really, really turning this into a square. All right, let's create, let's create your first corner. So you're going to make two puffs in between the two first puffs from the previous round, from round four. And you're going to chain one and make another one. And then this time you're going to make four puffs. So a puff in between each and every two puffs from the previous round four times. And then another corner, that's our second corner now. So again, you're going to make two puff stitch in the same space. There is one, chain one, up, another one. So you have two corners made and you have made, <laughs> and you have four puff stitches in between. And that's what you're going to do all around your fifth round. This is what your fifth round will look like. You end as usual, slip stitching at the top of the first uh, puff you had made. All right, are you ready for the sixth one? It is more of the same with a little chain in between the corners. Uh, we're going to add little chains to make the corner more square. All right, so round six, you're going to, in that first space, in between the two puff stitches from the previous round, make a puff stitch. But this time you're going to chain two in between your puffs and then make another puff. One corner made. Then in between the corners this time for this round six, you will have five puff stitches in between the corners. So make a puff stitch in between the two puff stitch, uh, stitches from the previous round five times. We are at round six. Once you have five puff stitches, you're going to create your second corner, which consists in uh, a puff stitch, two chains, and another puff stitch in the same space. And it should be in the corner from the previous round, from round five. And 
you can see that it's turning more into a square than around. We have one corner made, five puff, another corner. Now you're going to make five puffs again, another corner, five puffs, another corner. You're going to do that until you have four corners separated by five puffs. And that will be the end of your sixth round. I will meet you then. You see how from a circle it's turning into a square super gently? I like that. Round seven will be more of the same, but you are going to add one chain in between the corner puff. So you're going to have three chains now. So you make your puff, chain three, and another puff in the chain two from the previous round, corner stitch. And now you, have, you are at round seven, you will have six puffs in between your corners. So you're going to make a puff in between the two puffs from the previous round six times. And once you have your six puffs in the next corner, the chain two from the previous round, you're going to make a puff, chain three and a puff. And that is what we're going to do now consistently uh, throughout the rest of the pattern, you're going to have a chain three in between the two puffs in each and every corner. All right. And we definitely have a square now. It's magic. Totally magical. So basically what you are going to do now is continue to uh, do rounds and rounds and rounds. Each round you will add one puff in between your corner. So for round seven you had six puffs, for round eight you will have seven puffs in between your corners and the corners are going to stay the same, two puffs separated by a chain three. And you will do that continuing until you reach your size. For me, I went, and this is the size small, medium, I went, here it is, uh, round eight, uh, I had seven puffs, round nine, I have eight puffs in between my corner, etc., etc. And I continued until round 35. So I had 34 puffs in between my corners, a total of 144 puffs. And then I fastened off. The main back is done of my cardigan, kind of, because we're going to add on. And uh, now it is time to create the sleeve opening. It is super easy. I will, of course, take, take you through it slowly, but surely. All right, so here you can see the right color yarn, which is the couture yarn. And I began with the beige, gradually going with the color that is darker and darker. So you place your work in front of you, right size facing you. This is what you're going to have, except you fastened off. I haven't fastened off yet here. And what we want to do is create the sleeves opening. This is what we're going to do. Your work will look like that once we are done creating the arm opening and continued on for a few rounds. So you see those two slits, those are the opening for your uh, sleeves. The top of your, the color will be there and that's the bottom of your work. Okay, so you fastened off and you have your square in front of you. You're going to take two stitch markers and it should be a square. So it doesn't matter what size you choose to do that. They just need to be opposite to each other. So you are going to take your stitch marker and you're going to count from the corner. So you have your corner and you're going to count 15 puff stitches. And after the 15th first, first uh, uh, and after the 15th puff stitch in that ch chain space, you will place your stitch marker. Then you're going to go to the opposite side. So counting from the bottom up again, but the opposite side, 15 puff stitch, putting the stitch marker in the space in between the 15th and the 16th one. Okay. Should be symmetrical. It should be right there, opposite side. All right. And now, do you remember the first uh, stitch marker you put on the right? You're going to join at the upper corner right there, this one. I tried to stay consistent with my color. So I took the blue color that looked like the one I ended up, you know, it has a little bit of beige and a little bit of turquoise in it. And I joined with that color from uh, another skein. And then I joined at the corner right on top of where I had put uh, my first stitch marker. 
in the corner. Right, Picasso is back. If your first stitch marker is there, this is where you're going to join for the corner. There we go. And I create a corner again by making uh, a puff stitch, chain three and another puff stitch in that same corner stitch in the chain three. You can see that first stitch marker that I had put there at the bottom of the same side. All right, I created a corner and now I am going to continue to crochet in pattern. This is actually the bottom of your cardigan that I am crocheting right now. And I'm going to reach the corner, make a corner, and I'm going to crochet until I reach that second stitch marker we had put placed. Once I reach that second stitch marker right there, so it was uh, in between the 15 and the 16th puff, remember? So I make a puff in that space where I had placed the stitch marker. And then I am going to chain 30. Once you have 30 chains in total, you're going to make, you're going to skip all the puffs so it's about 15 puffs until you reach the corner stitch and you're going to make a corner in it so a puff stitch chain three and a puff stitch and you just created the first opening for your sleeve and we need another one which will be at the opposite side all right so here is a little drawing resume of what we are doing so we joined at this corner remember we crochet until that corner, made a corner, crochet until the second stitch marker, chain 30. Now we're making a corner. We're going to continue in pattern, make another corner. Then we're going to chain 30 and we're going to puff stitch into the first stitch marker we had made and then continue to crochet until we meet the beginning of our round. So you're making your corner. This is where you will build the sleeve much later. We're not there yet chain three make the second puff for the corner now you're going to continue in pattern all along the upper part of your cardigan which will be the color and you're just continuing in pattern reaching the next uh, corner and you're going to make your corner in it and then i will meet you at the corner So we made, you remember that first opening, and then we made a corner, crochet in pattern along the top. You reach the corner, you're going to make your corner, and at the end of your corner, you're going to chain 30 again. Once you have 30 chains, you're going to go in the space where you had placed your stitch marker and make a puff stitch. So you skip all the puff stitches that lead to where you had put your stitch marker. And in that space, now you're going to make a puff stitch. And just like that, you created the second opening for your sleeves. And now you're going to continue in pattern, making puff stitches until the end of your round 36. And at the end of the round, again, as usual, you will slip stitch on top of the first stitch you had made, uh, the first puff stitch. And voila, so just like that, now your two, your two sleeve openings are made, are created. This is really, really cool. This is one, you can take the stitch markers out and actually place my stitch marker just at the beginning of my round. We are still crocheting in the rounds now. We are at round 37. You can take that uh, other stitch marker off as well. 
So you begin round 37 as usual, making a corner, and then you're going to puff stitch regularly until you meet the, here you go, then you're going to make a corner, and again, until you meet the chain. So regularly making your puffs, corners, puffs, I will meet you right before you meet the first chain of the sleeve opening. And once you meet that, you are going to make your last puff in between the two puffs from the previous round. Go to the first chain and make a puff in it. So you're skipping a puff from the previous round and then in the first chain, right away, you make a puff. Then you're going to skip a chain and make a puff in the next chain. And that is what you're going to do all along that sleeve opening. So skip a chain, make a puff, skip a chain, make a puff, skip a, st skip a chain, make a puff until you reach the last chain. And I will meet you then. In total, I am making 15 puffs along my chain. Alright, this is what your work will look like. You will have puff stitches on top of your chain. And when you are done, once you're done with your last puff stitch right there, you're going to go in the corner and make a corner stitch. So you're going to make your puff right there. <clears throat> I have a cat in my throat, meow. And then make chain three, make three chains. And what is going on? <laughs> I cannot talk. One corner made, and then you're going to do the top of your cardigan in the regular pattern until you meet the second chain and then you're going to repeat. So you're going to make the corner and then you're going to make your puff stitches, same amount of puff stitches as the other side in the chain space. Then you're going to continue in pattern until you reach the end of your round. And you're going to continue like that now. Once you have your uh, sleeve openings, you're going to continue like that, round and rounds and rounds. And um, I went from round 38 to round 59. This is what my uh, work looked like. And at the end of my 59th round, I fastened off. So for now, this is what my work look like. And we to create the asymmetrical look that we want, we're going to add panels on the right and on the left, right there. And we will no longer be working in the rounds. We will be creating rows from now on. Of course, I will show you exactly how to do it with the right side of your work facing you. You're going to join at the corner right there. And we are going to begin to create a rows. So as I said, you will be joining at the corner, but we're not going to make a corner in the corner anymore. We're going to create straight um, rows. So we created the square in the middle with the two openings, and now we're going to create the side panels, two rectangles. And this is where you're going to join your yarn to begin to work in rows. And the rows will be worked like so. Let me show you how. So you join at the corner as usual, take your color, matching color, and make a slip knot and pass it. And you're going to make a chain three. And that we count as a first double crochet. And then in the chain three space, you will make one puff stitch. Then you're going to make another puff stitch in between the two puff stitches from that side panel. And you're going to continue like that all along the side panel of your cardigan, making puff stitches as usual. And I will show you how to end your row. No more rounds. So I will meet you at the end of this row when you meet the corner. 
Here you go. And once you meet the corner of that first side panel row, oopsie, come back here. Slippery fingers. Make your puff stitch right in before the corner. And then you're going to make one puff stitch in the chain three space in the corner. And you're going to end by making a double crochet. And then, super important, turn around and chain three. That will count as your first double crochet. And then, in between the two first puffs, make a puff. And that is your second row. And you're going to continue in pattern until the end of the row. And I will meet you at the end of your second row when you reach the last uh, stitch. I will show you what to do. Here you go. So you are making your last puff in between the two puffs from the previous row. <coughs> Chain one. And then you are going to make a double crochet right on top of the chain three you had made at the beginning of the previous row and you can even make a double crochet in the second chain that makes for a straighter edge and then you're going to chain three and turn this is your third row so you would chain three and then in that space between the chain three and the first puff from the previous row you will make a first puff to match the puff that was not at the previous row but one row below if that makes any sense because you want it to be a straight line for your side panel so now each row will begin the same way and end the same way you end as you ended the previous row that means that you do your puff stitch and then you do a double crochet on top of the chain three from the previous row so it begins the same way it ends the same way you repeat that row three until the end of row 18 and once you are at the end of row 18 you fasten off you're going to repeat exactly the same way for the other side panel so on the opposite side same thing row 1 to 18 creating that side panel that will make your cardigan asymmetrical and so we are basically done with the body but there are some adjustments to make at the end of the second panel, when you are at the end of your 18th row, do not fasten off. And we're going to make a border, kind of. We're going to work all around the cardigan. So again, making four corners and puff stitches in between. And we're going to do that for three rows. So for three more rounds, we are going to be crocheting in rounds again. So you're going to at the end of your 18th row, you're going to make a corner. So you're going to make a puff stitch in the um, chain three from the previous uh, row, but you're going to chain three and make another puff stitch in that same chain three, instead of just turning, you do not turn. All right, so you created a corner right there, and then you're going to pick up puff stitches from the side of the side panel you just created. So we had 18 rows. You're going to pick up from the side one puff stitch per row. It shouldn't be that hard because you began the row, the row with a chain three and you ended with a double crochet. So each, in each chain three and double crochet from the side panel, you make a puff stitch you should have you should have about 18 puff stitches in total at the top of your side panel so a puff stitch in the chain three a puff stitch in the double crochet 18 times until you reach uh, uh, the middle part which is really the back part of your cardigan and there it will be really easy because you are just going to make puff stitches in between two puff stitches as usual until you reach the other side panel and you will have to pick up 18 puff stitches again from the side panel
and this is what I'm talking about. You have your 18 uh, puff stitches right there and now you're meeting the top of the back and it's way easier because you make puff stitch as usual as they present themselves to you. And then when you reach the other side panel, you will, will pick up your 18 puffs again. So you will continue like that around and around. I did three rounds. So again, creating four corners and making puff stitches in between. So you have that first round where you pick up the 18 puff stitches on the side panels. But then for the second and the third round, it's just going on around and around and around, uh, making puffs in between four corners. And then you fasten off. And now you're really done with the body of your cardigan. And now we are going to create the sleeves. With your work facing you and you're going to find the bottom part of your sleeve and you're going to join at the bottom uh, space in between the two puffs from the both side of your sleeve and you're going to join with the color of your choice that you have decided to create the sleeves i wanted the continu continuation of uh, the blue and the beige and i joined in between the two bottom puff stitches at the bottom of the sleeve opening. And now it's super easy. I am just picking up puff stitches all around in between each and every puff stitch. Since you join at the bottom middle stitch, you are going to gain two puff stitches. So at the end of the first round of your sleeve, you will have the 15 puff stitches from the side twice, that's 30, plus two extra stitches, puff stitches, one from the bottom and one from the top. So in total, at the end of your first round of picking up puff stitches all around your sleeve opening, you should have 32 puffs in total. Do you see there that little stitch in between that's at the top of your sleeve? Here you go, we are at the end of your first round. You picked up your puff stitches and you're going to pick up the last one right here and then you're going to slip stitch with the first stitch you had the first puff stitch you had made and now round two to five should be puff stitch all around you should have 32 puff stitches still at the end of your round five Now round six will be a round of decrease. We're going to begin to decrease the sleeve. So you're going to you're going to do your rounds as usual. And then when you meet the end of your round seven, you have two puff stitches left. We are going to decrease turning those two puff stitches into one. Super easy, but let me show you how to in slow motion. So you're going to go in the next space in between the two puffs from the previous round and you're going to begin to do your puff stitch as usual. Yarn over, pull, put your crochet hook through the chain one space, yarn over and back, give it a little tug, you have three loops, yarn over, through the stitch, give it a little tug, you have five loops. Now you're going to go to the next stitch, the next space in between the next two puffs, yarn over, through the next space yarn over and back and then you're going to finish your puff stitch as usual yarn over through all the loops on your crochet hook and just like so you turn two puff stitches into one chain one and then slip stitch on top of the first puff stitch from the previous round and that was round six. And you're going to repeat round six until you have 26 puffs left. So right now you had 32 puffs, you have 31 puffs. And that was 
round six. That means you're going to repeat round six until the end of round 11. At this point, you should have 26 puffs in total. All right, so we decrease to 26 puff stitches and then we're going to continue straight for a number of rounds and then we will increase to give it the flare. So you crochet straight until the end of round 32 and then at round 33, you begin to increase. Increasing is really, really simple. It's just adding puff stitches. So you are at the beginning of your round 33 and you're going to just make two puff stitches in the space between the two puff stitches from the previous uh, round. In the same space and just like that you added a puff stitch. And then you're going to continue your 33rd round as usual puff stitch in between two puff stitches from the previous round all around until you meet the end and this is what you're going to continue to do all around in the next few rounds you're going to just increase by making two puff stitches in the same space at the beginning of each round and you do it until you have the flare that you wish also we all have different arm length for my arm length I had 14 more rounds of increase in total so it took me to the end of round 46 and then i fastened off i repeated exactly the same thing for the other sleeve so from round one to round 46 and then i fastened off i sewed in all the loose tail at the back of my work and voila just like that we created together this beautiful asymmetrical cardigan which is perfect for the fall or for the cold summer nights i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial as much as i have enjoyed creating it for you i am looking forward to many 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 more in the meantime happy crochet and see you next time bye